Hey there, thanks for stopping by. Today we are talking about additive monotype. I've made some previous videos about some other monotype methods. If you're interested, there's reductive, there's trace monotype. I'll make sure to link them down below if you're interested. So what is additive monotype? Effectively, it's as if you are creating a painting, but on a shiny surface and then taking a print from that painting. That's why it's called additive, because you are adding the ink that you want onto the plate and everything that is on that plate will get printed. You might then say, okay, Gemma, so what is the point of that? Because I could just do a painting on a lovely canvas or in my sketchbook. Yes, yes you could. What I encourage you to try with additive monotype is using it as a kind of experimental playground that you can practice creating paintings on. What I mean by this is that firstly, when you're painting on a shiny surface, the paint or the ink acts very differently from when you're painting on a canvas. The shininess lets it move around in different ways and creates very different textures that are hugely fun. Secondly, the fact is, you can create the painting, make a print, look at the print and see how the composition is going. And if you don't like it, you can go back to that original plate. You can move the ink around, you can change it, remove it, add new stuff on. You're effectively creating your painting and testing it out in lots of different ways and seeing what works and what doesn't. I don't know about you, but I think that's quite cool. Let me know if you agree down in the comments. If you're new here, thank you for taking a punt on this video. My name is Gemma, I'm an artist maker and I just like to learn new things, make lots of stuff and take you along on the journey with me. You can find me elsewhere on Skillshare, Instagram and at my website GemmaThePen.com. With all that being said, let's get money printed. Grab some brushes that you can apply the ink with. Also have some plain paper to hand that you can print with. I'm using a piece of glass from an old photo frame for my shiny surface. Other options you can try are a piece of acrylic, some acetate taped down to your surface, a mirror or the table that you have as long as it's non-porous and easy to clean. The great thing about having a transparent surface is that it allows you to put things underneath. So I've just got a plain piece of paper here and that will act just as a guide for where I'm going to put my ink so that I know it will fit on the paper that I'm going to use to print from. But you could also place other things underneath such as a photograph or a sketch that you've already made and use it as a guide to trace from. I'm using water-based inks because they're easy to clean but you can also use oil-based inks which will give you a longer time to be able to manipulate them without them drying out. You can even use acrylic paint to try this with but you might want to put an extender medium into it just to keep the paints workable for that little bit longer. With this kind of printing at home the drier the paints are on the plate the lighter the prints are going to be. So it does encourage you to work quickly.
you can grab a piece of tissue at any point and remember the reductive monotype method. You can absolutely combine them in. So if you have paint on your plate here and you're not quite happy with how it's going or you want to add perhaps some highlights somewhere then you can always take ink off of the plate as well as put it back on so let's just have a go here perhaps if we wanted to have a bit of shine i'm gonna mess this up now whoops i've sort of messed that up slightly because i used quite a big piece of um tissue there i see it's working better up here so we'll just fill some of that back in and I can feel that it is starting to dry some of the ink on here now. You feel a kind of resistance sometimes as you're moving the ink around and you know that it's drying out so that's the time to go in for a print. Actually that's not too bad now I think it's kind of got a bit of a shine. With all art you make it up as you go along and you hope for the best and you problem solve as problems arise. <laughs> We're going to try and print that one now and just see what happens because ooh, let's just go for it. Hmm, that's not too bad. So sometimes you'll pull a print and at first sort of gut reaction you look at it and you might go okay it didn't come out exactly the same as this no because we're not in a professional environment where we can replicate this we haven't got the pressure to be able to press down on it and get all of those deep tones and retain this exact look but the more that you look at your print I don't know the more I get pulled into it I don't know about you I think the blue really has a, a kind of different texture to the black which is interesting and I really like the sort of yeah the, like they're meant to be leaves but they've sort of come out more like feathers and I, I quite like that it's just got a really nice soft texture about it and yeah super happy you can also at any point go in to get a ghost print. A ghost print is when you don't add anything extra to your plate after having taken a print. You just go straight in with another piece of paper and take a print of whatever is left on your plate. It usually comes out with a very faint impression of whatever your design is. Ooh, look at that. Well, that's quite nice quite enjoying that it's just super soft and I can imagine that it would be quite nice to draw on top of this and create something new with it that way okay so when you come to cleaning up if you've got water-based inks it's super easy you just have water on a cloth and smoosh it around and it comes off super easy if you're using oil-based inks you can use vegetable oil or sunflower oil to take that off instead so that was a very simple look at additive monotype. You can, of course, as you get more into printmaking, go further into using different types of paper, experimenting with different tools and brushes, making the paper damp instead of dry. There's lots of different things you can do to explore this further. But for now, this is the very basic way that you can make a print in an additive monotype way. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please think about giving it a thumbs up. It really helps to support the channel and spreads the video to other makers. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I will see you next time. Bye.